Okay, welcome to the goals and today is a lighter topic with a heavier impact. So we'll not discuss a lot of complex stuff. We'll be floating around easy things and philosophies and minor concepts, which hopefully will be fun. So the topic is Swarm Robotics. And I won't be teaching any new algorithm. So, let's start off with a slight repeat of the introduction class and if I look around, they are what are called as the natural swarms and the natural swarms are extremely interesting because consider the fish, the school of fish. So. They beautifully travel from one place to the other as a nice group, reach where they want to. If a predator comes, they just go away. Few of them unfortunately die in the process. Predator also needs to have lunch and dinner, but eventually after the predator is gone, they assemble back and move in a nice coordination. Uh, you probably would have never heard of 10 fishes fighting like political parties. I have more supporters, more people join me, go where I say. They go like a nice girl in an extremely coordinated manner. So that's pretty good to observe. Now, humans are of course the most intelligent animals. Some humans... So, the fishes are supposed to be very simple organisms with smaller, simpler brains with just eyes that can look a little bit around. So how do they get such coordination? They don't even have a rich language like English or they're not even literate to sign agreement documents. So how do they do all that? Which is pretty interesting. So you also talk about the ant colonies. So, leave sweets one day at your home, unprotected, and all the ants will come for a grand feast. So, we know in humans, grand feasts are marriages which takes months and months of planning, a few years to get a bride or a groom, and a few months to organize a big fat Indian wedding, but ants can just come in minutes. So how does all that happen? How do they coordinate between themselves? You'll never see ants so active until the day you leave something. So there's something in very interesting going around. And again, ants are even smaller. Just minicule, smallest insects with hardly any brain. And they can barely see, so they're extremely short-sighted. And how do they do that, which is pretty interesting. So the flocking of birds is another thing interesting. So the birds, again, the same characteristic display, all of them going in as a group. They migrate for miles. And if you look at the same thing in the aviation sector, any modern-day pilots uses a sophisticated scientific navigation system by which, of course, the pilot can get you to your home. How do the birds do that? That's wonderful. And it's all in sync with each other. So there's probably something great, a great technology going around. We've got the chopping of birds. So the birds don't join music schools and get a bachelor's, master's or a doctorate in singing. Humans do. They don't do a lot of musical concerts and they don't do a lot of formal education. They cannot even read and write. 
So how is it that the chirping is in such a sync with each other? And again, birds are not the most intelligent agents. The birds are not the most intelligent animals. They've got limited brain power. So that's something again, pretty interesting to see. You've got the bacterial colonies. So how do the bacteria really attack us, multiply and do all those things and we have to take in medicines and get a cure? So that these questions include scientists and philosophers and everybody in the domain, the cognitive scientists, into looking at what is it in all these cases and it turns out that of course they have the emergent properties which means something is more than some of its parts so one ant can never it's extremely unlikely to get to your sweets which you have kept mm, one bird can it's extremely unlikely to migrate for miles and miles and miles so then one fish will hardly be able to avoid the predator and go to wherever it wants. So, because all these animals, they operate along with each other, it gives them a very special advantage. And they are, remember, thousands and thousands of numbers. Uh, leave something sweet at your house, you can count the number of ants that attack. Just do the counting, don't kill them. You'll know that how many ants are being coordinated. So, there's something interesting in that. Now, this has led to two fields. The first field that has led to is what is swarm intelligence. Uh, we will be talking a bit about them, that this in the course but not today. So Swarm Intelligence is making good algorithms inspired by natural swarms. Most of them, not all, are optimization algorithms and they do a great job. They've really changed domains after domains. So these are interesting algorithms and we use these algorithms for all kinds of optimizations for solving some real hard problems of computing, of artificial intelligence, which otherwise by using classical techniques would not have been even possible. And they have a great role to play in that perspective. We'll not be looking at these algorithms, so this led to the ant colony optimization, the particle swarm optimization, the artificial immune systems, and all the wonderful algorithms. So artificial immune system with a great role in security, anomaly detection, and some great optimization, design optimization algorithms over there. Now, the second one is what we will talk about today, which is Swarm Robotics. And for the first time, I very harshly and very firmly use the term robots. So far, it was like just a simulation system. So everything is just virtual. There are no real robots. This is the first time that I underline the term robotics. So this is going to be a physical robotics lecture. This time it's nothing simulated. This time let's assume that there is a real robot and the difference between the two is that if your problem just requires finding a few optimal parameters, finding out what is the congestion level at different parts of the map, finding out what are the flows or what's the proper that the system can have all these things, you use simulation now, I've got a physical real problems like these days. I want real coffee. In our meetings, we don't get coffees now, thanks to COVID. So, I want real coffee. Now, I can't say that, okay, let me drink a virtual coffee. Oh my God, how great it is. 
best coffee in the world, virtual. So now I've got physical real problems. And for every news from robotics to solve in some interesting problems. So now the term robotics has been used directly for the first time. So therefore let's look at robotics first from, first from a hardware perspective. And it's not a robotics class, it's not an introduction to robotics. So therefore let us also set down some ground rules or let us say more directly the properties of the swarms. So that I can decide what kind of hardware will be best suited. Otherwise, for robotics, talking about hardware could take hours of lecture just because of the variety possible. So